Okay, this is the manganese sulfate fertilizer grade. Now, you have to trust me on this. I weighed this out yesterday. This is a three mole concentration. Or I weighed it out for three moles. This is a manganese sulfate monohydrate. So, I just wanted to show you when I, when I mix this together, the color that I get, you can see that it's, it's quite uh, contaminated with uh, an unknown contaminant. It's, I assume it's probably a raw form of just leached, leached manganese from manganese rock using sulfuric acid. Um, I presume just like a, a standard industrial process, they just use uh, sulfuric acid leaching out the, the manganese and then they dehydrate it and sell it as a fertilizer. So we have, who knows, cobalt, nickel, iron, calcium, mag um, magnesium, now, manganese, and all I want is the manganese, manganese sulfate. So, what we should have is a solution that looks like this one. Nice pink solution, right? But instead, you can probably see here, we're getting a very brown solution. It takes, it does take a while to, to dissolve and go into solution. Now earlier I, f I found that adding a little bit of sulfuric acid was helping to uh, bring everything into solution, but that was with the, with the zinc sulfate, but um, that didn't solve everything. What all, I, all I was doing is just um, finishing the leaching process and getting all the other, all the other elements into solution. But it's not what I want. I want to I really need to purify this. Now the reason I bought these fertilizer grade, for one, they're, they're available. I can, I can just go around basically to the corner shop. There's farm supplies everywhere. Um, I have a ranch, so I need, I need to get supplies. Um, if I'm going to use these particular fertilizers or whatever, I'm not sure yet. But I have these available to me, and they're cheap. Like. Um, ranging from, well, in Mexican pesos, ranging from five, 500 to 900 pesos, which, which works out to anywhere from 30 to $70 Canadian. And uh, you work out uh, whatever de denomination, whichever currency that you use, it, it, it's a cheap source. And... Uh, you know, the, the percentage of, of the element that you're after varies, like the zinc is 33%, and I think the, the manganese is the same. And uh, I can't buy manganese alone at the price that I, would, I can get in that uh, 25 kilo sack. I get about uh, seven, seven and a half kilos of, of, of zinc for, say, even if it's um, 50, 50 Canadian dollars, um, that same amount of zinc would cost me maybe 80 or 90 dollars. Now, given I have to process it, I still have 7 kilos of zinc plus how many ever kilos of sulfuric acid on top of it. So the, the price is seemingly worth it, but I don't know what what other processes and energy and maybe other solvents I might need to put into it. But uh, that's the other thing. If I can use only heat energy or a little bit of electricity or something I might have on hand, then I don't need to use um, anything that costs extra money. Now, now you can see here, this doesn't look like manganese sulfate. It looks looks awful, really. And I wasn't sure if I could use this. I tried uh, electro-winnowing this, and I was getting 
manganese dioxide out of it or look like it, and it seemed to perform similarly. But um, I, I was reading different studies and uh, different industrial processes, and one common uh, thing that's used both in the zinc and manganese industry, and probably others, they use um, limestone to uh, drop out iron from their leach solutions. Now, here in, in this region, which I found quite interesting, uh, the ground is composed a lot, but mostly of this, this, um, this calcium, um, calcium carbonate material. Now, I've got a big hole I've dug outside, and I've just dug this straight out of the ground. This is now I've also been uh, crystallizing this. I have a little little cup at, at, at my uh, house I'm renting where I've been crystallizing this to see if I can figure out the purity of this. And I think it also has iron and and a few other things mixed in with it. It's not pure. Um, and you can look at these crystals I have. You can see that the the iron is separating out. But this this looks like a pure white crystal or pure white powder that I've just dug out of the ground. And I found I mix a small amount of this with with my uh, manganese sulfate it does actually alone in its raw form precipitate out a lot of the impurities now I was reading still that another problem is uh, having calcium and magnesium trapped in the leach solution. So I, I have to find other tests to uh, determine if I still have that in, in my solution. But this is a free resource, free resource to me. I can just, uh, well, I feel like heating up right now. But I can just uh, run that through my filter here. And let that go for a bit. I can filter that out a few times. And that solution will come out relatively pink. Just, just putting in that calcium carbonate that I've dug out of the ground. Get some more of that in there so, so it can keep reacting. I'll let that uh, run as a time lapse. Okay, so that's probably enough to see that it's coming out as a fairly nice pink color. Um, now this is manganese sulfate and it's easily converted to manganese chloride or um, manganese carbonate which can be used um, chemically, hydrothermally or um, uh, sol uh, solvos thermal um, to produce uh, different uh, manganese uh, oxides or various different um, oxides of, of manganese for cathodes and uh, electrolytes and it should be infinitely recyclable you should never have to lose your manganese um, if we're producing a battery, um, at the end of the life of the battery, we should be able to leach this back out with a little bit of sulfuric acid and perform 
it should be even easier to uh, clean it up and process it again to produce your cathodes and electrolyte over and over again. Um, the problem I have, a lot of the studies I read and a lot of what I hear um, on different videos, YouTube, uh, and all over the place, many people work with um, potassium perm permanganate. Yeah, potassium permanganate. And um, that's a difficult substance to produce. Um, so what I'm going to try to do, all my work, I'm going to try to work with um, manganese sulfates, manganese carbonates, and uh, see what I can do to use other oxidizers and see if I can um, synthesize these various um, oxides that I want to use and try for different uh, cathode material. And I don't see why it shouldn't be able to be done. Um, potassium permanganate uh, seems to be difficult to get a hold of and extremely expensive and extremely dis difficult to synthesize. The, the methods that I've seen everywhere produce really low yields with um, many contaminants that have to be dealt with one way or the other. And I don't like it. I, I want to have a process that is recyclable, simple and recyclable. That's, that's my main goal with any of my projects is recyclability. So um, I guess I'll leave it at that for now.